my name's Leonard McDermott. Uh, I've produced poetry pamphlets and I live in the Scottish borders. Uh, I've been working on this aspect of artistic production for several years now. Uh, my background is art school trained and uh, in the old art school training days where a lot of practical work was done. Uh, and I really enjoy what I do. I enjoy the company which seems to have proliferated over the last few years. And I'm greatly encouraged by lots of young people taking on the mantle of the old printing process and combining craft with art. My way of looking at things is that I don't actually write poetry. Um, I've never really considered myself a poet. Um, I think it's other people who make poets, not poets themselves. You're not a poet until somebody actually calls you one. Um, I don't think there's a, a career path in, in sixth form colleges where you say that you'll, you'll be a poet. It just happens. And the art is very, very much involved in it. But what I find absolutely interesting and enjoyable is that you're not just writing words, you're actually handling words, you're, you're creating words. Um, proofreaders say that you should always read something upside down to see if, if, if you've made any errors. But in actual fact, you're actually handling the words. And it means that the two processes, the creation and the production, are very, very closely linked. And this is important, I think. In fact, I've even been known to alter things when I've actually had the, the lead, the type in my hands, because it's there's this relationship which you do not get from computers. You can you can change things rapidly. You can do more or less anything, but with the discipline and the the rigor of actually putting words together, you're not you're actually composing. I have here a um, a composing stick, and this is what printers use when they're composing and composing music, art. You're actually you're actually composing. So you're you're picking the letters out, then you're putting them in, and you're making them fit. So you're actually handling lead type. And the what happens is that when you write something, obviously you get a shape. You can you can say right, well, there's a there's a there's a poem, I've written a poem. And you can see that it actually has a shape and it's printed poetry. And this has always been the way. You have a um, sonnet form, and you have sonata form, and you always have printing form. And, and the form is actually, can be quite heavy if you're working quite large, but there's the, there's the actual poem. And this is, part of the process and when it's printed that's when it's presented and that's when you can enter into it but the process is not just sitting in a garret um, with a with a pen and a pot of ink it's actually putting something down juggling it throwing it away or accepting it you're your own editor you're your own printer you're not handing something to a printer and either being disappointed or amazed at what they've done you are in charge so you're in complete control of the whole process. And the way it's presented, you can make it just words, or the words can become a picture, or you can just, or just do whatever you want with it. And you are responsible. You're your editor, you can either accept something, alter it, and then you put it out and see what happens. And the good thing is with being in complete control is that that you have a, the, the, the actual visual presentation and the sound that's in it and the entry that people can make into it. They can bring their own experiences in and you can almost swap experiences. And I've noticed with the whole group of people who produce poetry pamphlets is that there is a lot of interaction and very often things are taken further and very often meanings are put into things which you've not put in. Things are missed which you put in. But this doesn't matter. This is part of the whole creative process.
pam pamphlet poetry has a long, long tradition. Um, broadside ballads, uh, uh, political pamphlets. Pamphleteering is a way of, uh, is, is a message. And I've used the pamphlet form, but I don't always use a pamphlet. I've got my, the first pamphlet I ever produced, which is long out of print now, um, it was called Th 13 Letters Written on, on Air. And I, this was written in, well, a long time ago now. And the presentation of this was, uh, I, I worked from the old notion of printers try and try and try for perfection. And I thought, well, this will be a nice visual image. And slowly I've constructed with lino prints and type. I've chosen the type, I've chosen the paper, but I've kept very, very much to a, a book, booklet, pamphlet format, uh, even, with an, even with a dust jacket. So there is, there is a dust jacket on it as well. And I've used the traditional printer's rules and decorations, but I've also kept a little bit of artistic con content in it as well. And I hope that I've put a lot into it. Now this was, this was printed in 1996. And looking at this and looking at my last production, I, I noticed there's very little difference. I'm now back where I started almost with these two, same size, same everything, dust wrapper, but this one happened to be an envelope because that was part of the brief. So this, the same is the same. I won't do this as carefully as you did it, but then inside your dust wrapper, which is a convention envelope, there is the, there is the, I've noticed I'm using exactly the same technique. But that doesn't mean that I've been stuck in my ways, but there again is, is the shape of the poem. Uh, and sometimes it needs some sort of visual image with it. Sometimes it stands alone. Uh, but again, I've been playing with the notions of the, the discipline of printing and the way that printers can illustrate. So you can actually put the words into a discipline rule and of course this is called window so there is there is a window and the different saying more or less the same thing and yet saying it in a way that you're making a decision this is a railway imagery it's the it, this is to do with um signal boxes signal men they're called signalers now but they were always signal men in a signal box or a cabin uh, I think they're probably called control centers or something now, but somewhere somebody would be working and there was something which was called a fog object, which they could see from their window. And no matter what the landscape would be, the fog object was important. It could be a factory chimney, it could be a tree, it could be a church spire. And at some stage, if it was foggy, and in the old days it could be foggy, the fog object was the point where a huge decision had to be made. If you could see the fog object, it was okay. If you couldn't see the fog object, you knew it was foggy. But there was this little bit in between where could you see it, couldn't you see it? And the decision had to be made to call out fog signalmen or uh, to slow down processes. And that decision had to be made and that was one person's responsibility. And they had to get it right. So this is, this is all written into this poem, which is not a poem, it's a picture, but it's got type in it. And the, it comes the point, well, can you see that, can you not? And this is again, coming back to printing, that um, all printers have to say, used to say, we've got to make it visible. You can't make it invisible, invisible or just barely visible. So this is part of the, the fun and also part of the message that, that is in the in the poem so it seems to be more than a poem it is a poem but it's where is it is it a 
because of the fact that they're so close. Who knows? Well, Landway <laughs> is somewhere in between these, the beginning and the end. Uh, and this is a little pamphlet. And pamphlets are good because um, you can carry carry them with you, you can put them in your pocket. And this is a great advantage. So you can carry a poem with you. Uh, a lot of people carry poems in their head. Lots of people carry poems in their pockets. But it's something to look at. It's something to enter into. It's something you can pick up and put down. And this is Landway. Is I did a, a, a precursor to this called Seaway, which was the good old Arthur Ransom Swallows and Hammond and, and the 1930s type of illustration on the cover as I sort of come on and 20th century typeface. And Seaway was, again, in, the, in a similar sort of process that you could use lino cuts, you could use uh, just, just simple, simple words, but lots and lots of space in the right place. Uh, again, by being your own printer and publisher, you, you have the choice of colours, you have the choice of typefaces, you have the choice of, of, of well, you, whether you make um, lino cuts, whether the printing is in the lino cut or whether the lino cut is adjacent to the printing. That's, that's, that's a decision and a privilege which, which the, the writer or the artist or the printer has, has to himself or herself. So you can play with images such as this, and this is, this is a, a, I'll read it to it. It says, orange tip, gone, before we had time to color it in. And this is a, a, a it is a poem, but it's, it's, it's a poem which is wide open. You can play with it. It's childish, perhaps. It's almost uh, nursery rhyme-ish. It's, it's funny, and yet it can be quite serious because it's talking about one, specific moment in time. So Landway is, the theme is land, as Seaway the theme was sea. But again, it's part of the discipline. You can, I suppose it's like a string quartet, you can have movements, but the, the totality is quite important. And the totality is there in your hand. It's also in your head because perhaps you might recognize something, you might recognize something immediately is relevant to you, it may not be to the author or the, the artist who produced it. But this is good because it, it, it opens up, it widens the whole aspect of, of what's, what's being done. Just a very, very simple line of cut with a furrowed field. Um, and uh, Landway, there is one in here called Landway. It's, it's just, a, just a few lines, um, but it's a shape. It's a shape in itself, but it's, it's the thought that you can, you can have this thought, and you don't need much to hang on, on to the ideas. And uh, can I find it? Can I not? <laughs> but it's a very, very simple poem, and it's a very, very simple uh, present. There we are. Um, ignore that one. Landway. There it is. But it's it's a it's a shape. There's 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 the shape, and. I was absolutely intrigued because it was translated into into Greek, and in Greek, of course, it's the same shape. So, uh, but there's no there's no illustration with it. That's just simply words. Or you can just have the the typefaces, and you can have a notion. And this one it's called summer into autumn, and the the, the four words is just rose, bay, willow, herb. Which proliferates at this time, this time of year, late autumn, and it's it's an entry into you know the changing of the seasons, and yet the words, one individual word, you know, rose with a nice summery feel, and then bay with the seaside buckets and spades, willow, drooping willows, drifting willows, and then herb, uh, German, and German people would know that herbs is is autumn, so we have herb and we have herbs, and you can play and play and play with these words. Uh, you don't have to, you can just take it as an impact or you can enter into it 
And then once you've entered into it, then perhaps it leads to other things. You, you, can, you can use that as a point of departure as well as a point of entry. In fact, this one is so multi-layered. This is called, uh, this is snow, it just says snowdrop, so subtle. But underneath it, there is another poem. And again, it's printers want to make things legible. This is illegible. You have to hold this poem into the light. And underneath there's a little visual image of, of just snow falling. So the, this poem is two poems. And the subtlety is in the printing, and yet snowdrops, how subtle, you look into one and there it is. Wonder, wonderful things. So this is again seasonal, but it's playing with, with, the, with the two. When you see them as a form, as a, as a press form, there they are ready to go in the press. One is highly legible, and the other, because of the printing very, very pale grey on slightly, slightly darker grey, that's where the subtlety comes in. You can get these two, two combination, this combination of two approaches, and it makes it more than a poem. It makes it a, a, a statement, but it also makes a something to think about, perhaps. If you're an artist, you you make a picture, and uh, I saw in, in, in today's newspaper about the sale of work and things, you know, a Rothko for going for $19,000 at auction and for perhaps the asking price, the, the set price for it, uh, and it would probably go for more than that. Um, again, if you're an artist, you make a picture and how you make one and how do you, how do you say, what, what value is it? It's, it's just the value of people have it. But if you, uh, when I've, did my first one, getting back to the beginning, you, you try to make it precious, but it's not precious, it's, it's, it's printed paper. Um, and that's a good thing to do because it's egalitarian and you, can, you, can, you don't need to sell things for thousands of pounds, you can sell things at, at cost and you can reproduce them. You don't need to make limited editions. It's great you can make unlimited editions and just as valid as, as making it a limited edition makes makes things worth something, but worth is what? Nothing. One of my inspirations is, is, is a poet, is W.S. Graham, and there's one line in a longer poem of his, and it's, it, it, it's about what is the language using us for, and it's been a byword and a watchword for me for, since the, the, the 1950s. Um, and it's, the, the, the line is, um, it, it matters only in as much as we should be telling each other alive, about each other alive. 